Thank you uh, for your time. We just look forward to this time of the month to hear from you. And thank you for making this time available to us and enlightening us about the spirituality and many other things in, in life. So let me start with the questions. So the first question is from Bishmita. So the question is, uh, is it good to chant Gayatri Mantra when you feel like or there should be a rule for chanting? Oh no, Gayatri Mantra is, the, is, it is really, really a great mantra. And uh, many consider that this is the first mantra. The Gayatri, actually, it is a, we are praying to the sun. And you know, the Hindus always, is a symbolic way, they always think about the knowledge, the knowledge that always removes the darkness or, or the ignorance. The symbolic is the sun is removing the darkness of light and night. So obviously, when we are praying to the sun and we are getting that light, light of knowledge, light of spirituality, and our all ignorances about this world, that is also going away. And what is that ignorance about this world? But this is true. We always think that this world is the truth and it is remaining over here. That is not. It's very, very temporary. Of course, comparing with the human life uh, span, it is long, but otherwise it is a very temporary. And that is why we have to go back to the original, the Brahman, the creator. So that is called knowledge. So we pray to the sun god as if the sun is removing the darkness of the night. Similarly, the light of God will remove my darkness of ignorance from my mind. So that is the main prayer and it's a really good prayer. If you feel, of course you can do. But whatever the prayer we do or song we sing, Always try to understand the meaning of it. Remember the meaning. Then it will be more effective. Thank you. Maharaj, a follow-up question. So because you said that it is related to Shan, that means you should do it in the morning or in, during the dawn? Or is there any time? Of course, they say in the dawn is better. But you know, mantra is a mantra. And when you are, suppose some of the countries are there where the sun won't be there. So. <laughs> On the chant this mantra, it is nothing like that. The Gayatri mantra, they, it, it is of uh, remembering. As I was narrating, I was telling, it is only symbolic. Sun is the only symbol. Not that there should be sun. Even in the night when you are doing it, that also you can do. But the Brahmanas, they always say, you should not do this, you should not do that. But as a, as a spiritual practitioner, as a sannyasi, we don't think in that way. It, this is all right because the meaning of it is not the sun. We know sun is nothing but a star. We are not praying to the sun. We are praying to that light which is removing our darkness. Sunlight cannot remove our darkness. But we are praying to the sun. How it is? In the Upanishad itself it says, Natatra Suryo Bhati Nachandra Taruka Nema Bidduto Bhanti Kruto Ayam Agnihi. So, where you're talking about the fire, the light of fire cannot reach over there, not even the light of sun. So, why then we are worshipping the sun or praying to the sun? It is not the sun. It is a symbolic. The sun is removing the darkness of night. Similarly, O oh God or the Parabrahma. Please remove my ignorance. That is the symbol. So it doesn't matter whether it is night or day. Thank you, Maharaj. So the next question is from Adda Sharan Shina. So in the Vedas, we find these three terms often together, Shattam, Ritam, Brihat. Mm -hmm. Maharaj Ji may kindly expound to us the different meaning and its relationism to the Supreme Consciousness from the perspective of Advaita Vedanta and if time permits according to Trika system. The Satyam, Ritam and Brihat. Now the last one, Brihat, is all-pervasive, which is everywhere. The 
obviously, which is all pervasive, it cannot have any form. All pervasiveness is without form. Many of you know, many a times I said that the water is the symbol of all pervasiveness without form. That's why Hindus, they worship water. Though they keep the image in front, but the Durga Puja is coming. Observe that. But the, just in front of the Durga statue, the Murti, they will keep a, a water pot and they will worship that water pot. And that is called all pervasiveness. Now, the Brahman, Brahman means that is all pervasive con consciousness, all pervading consciousness. That is Brahman. Vishnu. Vishnu means Bistareti Vishnu. That which is all pervasive is Vishnu. Tantra. Tanyate Bistareti Jnanam Iti Tantram. There also it is all the knowledge that is covering everything. All pervasiveness. So that is called Hinduism which is all pervasive. That is why Hindus they cannot fight with others. <laughs> Nowadays, some of the people, they are not very happy with this explanation of the Hindus. The why should we fight? They like to fight, but the, our religion never allow us. To, why? Each, each and everything, everywhere, that supreme consciousness. Now, thinking this, the Brihat, that word, the Brihat, has been used. Uh, before that, there are two other words have been used to term one is rhythm another is satyam yet the satya doesn't mean truth yet the satyam satya means eternal sat chit ananda the sat 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 means eternal which never changes anything that changes is going to be destroyed and that which is not changing at all what is that Consciousness. Now, for the example, they say, I say that I was a little boy. I grew up. Now I am an old person. I am someday I am going to die. So that changes of the body and the mind. But I is constant. I was a little boy. I grew up. I am with. So this I is, what is that I? Is this the body? Constantly changing. When I put my finger on this body, by that time so many changes have come in the body. It is like they give the example, suppose you take a cup full of water from a flowing river. And when you are taking the water and say the same water, no, it is not the same water. Next, again, the other waters have already come, that has passed. Same way, the body is constantly changing. The science also proves that immediately all everything is changed. To which body then? When I say I, is this the body which was a small one lying on the lap of the mother? Or the body now? Which body I mean? Mind, mind is also changed. To when I say I, that ego, where is that ego? Which one is I? So that is the Sat. Sat means the eternal. I means consciousness. It is not the body. It is not the mind. It is the consciousness. Now that is Sat. And then Ritam. That Satyam means Sat. That means eternal. And Ritam means which never changes. And that is also another way of telling the Sat. The Sat, Satya and Ritam and Brihat means the same thing. Rita is straightforward. Rita is a, a sort of a rule, you can say. There's no argument. It has already been proven. There's no argument should be there. No more uh, deliberation on that. That is called Rita. The Satyam, Ritam, Brihat, indicating the all-pervasive consciousness. This all-pervasive consciousness, again, they say, as Brahman, not Brahmana. Brahmana is a caste. Brahman, the consciousness. And again, it is said that it is Bhagavan, 
the Bhagavan also the same, all pervasive, but as we cannot imagine anything without name and form, so we think about the Bhagavan, about the Ishwara. Did you notice that in Hindu temple there are so many gods and goddesses and they never fight? The Kali temple by the Sai Durga temple, the, the, the Krishna temple, and the Rama temple. Particularly, if you go to any American Hindu temple, it is a showcase of true Hinduism. So many gods and goddesses, including, I don't know why, who taught them, everywhere the Ashtavashu is also worshipped with great honor. Ashtavashu, the South Indian, the Ashtavashu. All these Vashus are also there, but no fighting. But suppose you go to any church, I'm not mentioning the Christian, but suppose they are putting one cross which is straight and another a separate, a little, this will go, the horizontal will go a little up, another church. They will never ever go to that church. And that is the reason churches are closing down. But if you put any God anywhere, all Hindus, maybe they don't know which God is that, but they will go and give some donation. Oh, some God, we don't know. But why it is? Because we don't worship that particular thing. Unknowingly, unknowingly, we are worshipping all pervasive, all pervading consciousness in different names and forms. So Sat Chit Ananda, why Sat Chit Ananda? Now look at us. We are the product of something, some action, and the, that is the result. Now the cause and result, the satkarya bada, there's a term is there called satkarya bada. What is that satkarya bada? Cause and effect. Now someone was texting and driving, that is the cause, effect, Hospital, you have to go, there will be accident and you go to hospital and all that. So cause is that inadvertently you are creating some problem. Cause is there. Now, no one of us like to die. Even an ant don't like to die. That is the effect. What is the cause? Because the one who has created that ant and all being never dies. So that has come to us and that is called the effect. So when I test myself, I understand my creator. Who is my creator? Eternal. Because I don't like to die. Second, we all like to know. And that is called chit. Chit means knowledge. C-H-I-T. Chit means knowledge. All are very curious. Sometimes you will find uh, some of the, in the some localities, some ladies are very curious. They'll be going on keeping information about the neighbors and all. They like to gossip on that. Everywhere, in every society, it is always there. Why did do that? Because they like to know. And the rishis are constantly meditating, reading the scriptures. Why? They like to know. But why do they like to know? Where from this notion has come? The speciality has come because our creator is the source of knowledge. The cause and effect. See, nobody is dictating. The Hindus are constantly judging, analyzing, proving, and then accepting. The religion is just not some words. It's not do's and don'ts. Some people, the thing is a do's and no. It's not like that. And finally, Ananda. Each and every one of us, we like to be happy. If someone is going to sell his unhappiness, who is going to purchase that? No one will purchase that. I will give you a million dollars if you take all my unhappiness. Who is going to purchase that? So the, obviously, Sat Chit Ananda, it is the cause is that, the effect is this, and that is why we say, we is our God, Sat Chit Anand. Sat means eternal. Chit means knowledge. Ananda means bliss, eternal. 
and we are the effect of that. No human being is satisfied ever. Why? Now, a G20 meeting is going on in India. All great leaders are there. Ask them, sir, are you happy? You are the top man, first man of your country. No one is happy. No one of them. If they truly say, otherwise when they're photo session, they'll be smiling. Every, but no one is happy. Why? This is because unless and until we go back to our sources, we can never be happy. So the Rishi says, go back to your own self. That was the call. As Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, Tumadir Chaitanya ho. That was the blessing. Tumra Barulok ho, you become rich, you become healthy, you become made. He never said that. He said, go back to the source. And then only you will be truly happy. And that is why this Satchit Ananda and Satyam Ritam and this is it. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. The next question is uh, from Adda again. Uh, in Shankha Darshana, 24 Tattas encompasses everything, whereas in Kashmiri Soibo system, an additional 12 Tattas totaling to 36 Tattas are discussed. Can Maharaj please bring forth the differences in the approach followed by these two systems? See, this is actually they are explaining the creator and the creation. This 24 Tattva of the Samkhya, Tattva means uh, the, this is system. But they say this, 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 like, as a, suppose you go to a school, a college or a university. They have their own system. So obviously, the same school, they are teaching the physics, but the system is there. They said, first, we will teach them this thing, then this thing, then that. So they, that way, every school, they differ. But it doesn't mean anything. They are telling the same thing. I always say, that suppose a boy, is, the few boys, students, they are learning the mathematics. And if it is in India, in Japan, in America, in Great Britain, the schools are different, languages are different, and systems are also different. But when they graduate into that subject, they all know what is mathematics, and they will be able to teach that mathematics. Similarly, this Kashmiri Shaivism, a few thinkers, Vishnadda Shiva himself, a few thinkers, some professors, they thought that we let us describe in this way. So they described in that way. Now, did you notice Bhagavan Sri Krishna in his Bhagavad Gita, he said, there are four types of people and they worship me. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he is also telling there are different type of people who will be worshipping the God. But he is giving a different number. He is giving a different number. Why? Because they have maybe, they have separated two qualities and increased the number. And Sri Ramakrishna made that, mingled two qualities and made one number less. So that way only. Otherwise, it is nothing. These are all philosophy. And philosophy means they always give the answer to three questions. First, who is the creator? Every philosophy has to explain that. Otherwise, it is not a philosophy. Second, what is this creation? Creator and the creation. Third, what is the relation between the creator and the creation? Otherwise, it is not a philosophy. A potter has made an ardent pot. Now, potter and the ardent pot, what is the relation? The potter, it is the intellectual cause. The ardent pot, the art, is the material cause. Now, what is the relation? He will sell it and earn money for his family to support his family. That is the relation. Otherwise, why he will do that? 
So this is the cause and naturally the creator, the creation and the effect, the relation. The, that pot, ardent pot and the potter, what is their relation? They, they, they will sell it and they'll earn some money. That's all. Now the God has created this universe. Now if you go to any religion, this is the same thing they will say. The Christian says God has created in seven days. Isn't it? And the Jewish also say in seven days. And the Muslims also say the seven days. But if you notice, the Jewish said he took rest on Saturday. So Saturday is Sabbath day. No one should work. Jews never touch anything. They will never go out of their home. Saturday, God took rest. You have to take rest. Now the Christians afterwards came. The Jews took Saturday. Now let us take another day. So they took Sunday. Have they consulted with the God? They said, when did you really rest it? Well, they, achha, they, say, achha, if they are Saturday or we are Sunday. Now, third came the Islam. They, very, they have taken all this. Now, Monday will be difficult. So, they have come to Friday. Now, if you go and ask why they have taken the Friday, it is not God. And now, ask the Hindus. If the God is taking rest, well, are you mad? If God take rest, then the whole thing will be, the, all will be destroyed. That's why our God is not having the eyelid. Jagannath, have you noticed it? Jagannath, he is the Nath, he is the master of the whole universe, Jagat. And he is not having even the eyelid. Constantly he is watching. If God goes to sleep, then what will happen? Pralaya. God's sleep means pralaya. Everything will be destroyed. So God is always busy. For us, there is no holiday. For them it is holiday. Now if you say why, that is because of some people they thought in that way. Otherwise it is all consciousness always every time. Now I will tell you one thing. Continue, uh, it is a different way. But the Hindus they said that when somebody is dead, some, someone's house or a new child is born in somebody's house they should not come to the temple. Did you know, know that? That if, if someone is dead, you are not after the final rites, 13 days after the death, 13 days, sometimes 11 days, sometimes 21 days, they should not go to the temple. Why? Now here in America, one lady came and told, I paid money to bring a priest from India now that priest is not allowing me to enter into the temple. I told, how come? Why he is asking it not to go? Because my uncle passed away. And where your uncle passed away? In Bombay. And the uncle passed away in Bombay. The priest over here in, in our Nepalville, the, I, I mean, uh, Lemont, is not allowing her. You know why? Because they go according to, as because that was the rule. But this has nothing to do with the religion. Previously, all deaths and all births were in the houses only. So when a person is dying, all the bacteria is going out of his body and they are in the bed and all nearby. So people close to him or the, of the dead person, they are also imbibing those things. If these people, they go to the temple, maybe they will be carrying the germ to the temple. And in those days, Temple were the only place where people used to mingle. Th that is the reason they say, don't come uh, to the temple after the death, 11 days morning, and you should be at home. By that time, the germs are gone. Did you notice that they are supposed to uh, take bath in a flowing river? Or they should burn their clothing. Or they should change their clothes, wash their clothing properly. Why? Just because that is the way you can save yourself. It has nothing to do with religion. The birth also the same way. 
immediately after the child is born, there's so much of bacteria. The local people, the, those who are nearby, they're having those things. The child is also accustomed. If some new people are going, it may be harmful for the newly born baby. So they say, you should not go, at least when the child is not coming out. All this for hygiene, for health reason, has nothing to do with the religion. But if you say that this is a science you should follow, nobody will follow. And if you say this is religion, and if you are not following, you will go to hell, everybody will follow. So that is the reason they get. Nowadays, nobody is dying at home by accident sometimes. Otherwise, mostly they are dying in the hospital. And in this case, the uncle died in Bombay. No chance of coming any bacteria so far. But still, this priest, he is carrying the bacteria in his head and going on implementing it. So sometimes religion, we do not understand what is religion. The systems that develop along with the practices of religion, we think that is religion and we criticize that. Religion has nothing to do with it. So this is the way we have to understand. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Next question is from Arindam Shen. Uh, there was no little organizational setup when Veda Ramayana Mahabharata was created. So the focus was on individualistic development. But in today's economy, where an individual mostly grinds under the organization, how he can reconcile hundreds of lies, unethical practices that goes as a part of his job and his individual achar and acharanas of making himself a better individual. He gives an example. If someone works in a fast food chain, he or she knows that every day they are killing thousands by serving this junk food and they are responsible for child obesity. How then he can he or she can find peace in this? <laughs> Very practical question. But suppose you think in that way, don't take your job in that company, that's all. So otherwise, you cannot. <laughs> suppose you, I am thinking, now when I was getting the American passport, uh, they were taking the oath in the, and you all know, in this country, they will be raising the right hand, either the president of, uh, president's photo or the, uh, or the flag of the country. So when the uh, that uh, the law that uh, that lady she was taking the oath and read that particular line, if necessary for America, I will take up arms and, as a citizen. Then I told, ma'am, I cannot say that because I have taken the oath and the promise that I will never do that. So I am a monk. So non-violence is my promise, I oath, I cannot do that. They say, is it? Then blot down your hand and don't utter this particular line. This is not for you. Others, you repeat. So like that, there are and there will be in this world different type of things. Lord Buddha, long back, he said, you should be careful how you are earning money. This is very, very important. But there are people, they are doing that. And if you are thinking that I am going to practice religion particularly, and very seriously, you should be careful about your the way, the method of earning too. That is for you, not for the whole society. Society will be going like this. Now, when the Vedas were written, or the Bibles were written, or the Jesus was leaving. Where was the fast food? <laughs> that fast food and all those things were there. The poor Jesus were not getting even a piece of bread. Thinking about other things were as a luxury. So the fast food and all these conceptions are coming and the people will be aware about the health consciousness will come. They will all now leave that and they will eat something else. It goes on. In the society, it's man to man, person to person. Those who are having the difficulty with the, the diabetics and other problem, obesity, they should be careful about the food. 
but a strong, well-built body. And if you have say, hey, don't eat sweets because you may get diabetes. Are when he will get diabetes? Okay, he will go for the sweets. Why not? The children, they, they will go for the sweets. And the confectionery shops, we cannot close down. And in that case, everything will be closed down. There will be nothing but air and maybe a little water to drink. And so that cannot be. So think in a different way. Am I concerned about that? I should not do that. But don't think or try to impose the same thing on others. That is the main problem. Some people, they think, ahimsa means not eating meat or fish or these and that. Who said? You thought in that way. Some people, they thought in that way. Now they are thinking that is the religion. You must have to practice that. Other religious people, they don't believe in your this vegetarian thing, but the other veggies are also there. Not only vegetarian, there are all another, another word nowadays. I hear what is that? Vegan. A vegan. There's also there. And so many. They're health conscious only. And if you think those who are eating fish, they will go to hell, then the heaven will be empty. Who will be in the heaven? So obviously think about it. It has nothing to do with the religion. Now again, let me elaborate it. In the Bhagavata, the 13th chapter, very clearly, Narada is giving the advice to Yudhishthira. When the Yudhishthira was crying, the, oh, what will happen to my mother and my that uh, the king the father's elder brother the the blind king so they have already left without informing him and they entered into the jungle who will feed them how will they will get the food narada then told and in two slokas and he said do you think that you are taking care about all people's food no, God has already created that. All that these things that you see, the man can eat. The meat, the bird, the fruits, everything a human can consume and can eat. And the four legs, these animals, they will be killing the grasses. The word meant healing. The they can kill the grasses. Grasses are also having the life. Now, these animals are eating them. So, this circle goes in this way. The creator has already thought and kept everything in that way. You need not to bother about that. So, this is the way you have to think. Hmm. Thank you. Next question is from Arindam again. Uh, Swamiji, you said have faith. Now, everything probably starts with that. When a child jumps into the water, for his first swimming class, he takes that leaf of faith that he will swim one day. But that faith is easy to take as thousands of individuals have followed and achieved that. In pursuing God, to have faith that if we break this cycle of birth and rebirth through karma fall, I'll be one with the God. Why it is not that obvious? Why no one except few can say they have experienced God? So why do we have such faith? So this is the toughest thing. Toughest thing. Now, how many people have achieved the certificates like the scientific knowledge, uh, like the famous scientist? How many? So many science students are there. But if you notice, very few will be Newton, isn't it? So many writers are there writing poems. Very few will be like our Rabindranath. I'm just naming one or two. Or those who are writing the stories, how many will be like Shakespeare? The exceptions are there, but it is there. And you know that they always say exception proves the law. That these people are there and that proves it is possible. When you look at the life of Jesus Christ, he was not having anything. He was not having wealth, no social status, not education, nothing was there. 
comparing with the kings of those days. Now, how many people do remember the king at the time of Jesus? Before or after him? All these Roman kings, so powerful kings, how many? Only the uh, history students maybe just they read only to pass the exam. That's all. Then they forget. But the Jesus without having anything is remembered by the millions and millions of people for 2,000 years. Do you think it is just some foolishness? And all these people it is the largest religion in the nowadays world, the Jesus Christianity. So all these millions and billions of people all are fools and they are following 2,000 years just understanding nothing. Think it about it. Buddha, 2,500 years. People don't know the name of the Buddha's father just because people will be uh, are interested to know he is a father and mother, they read the Bible. Otherwise, it is all Buddha, 2,500 years. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they were not having money, not like the Alexander, not like the great uh, kings. But there must be something very special in these people. And that is the reason all people, they like to follow that. But it is really, really difficult. You know why? Because you have to kill your own ego by yourself. That is the difficulty. That is the difficulty. That you have to kill your own ego yourself. No one can do that. And this is the toughest thing. Lord Buddha said in one place, if you conquer the whole world, I will say it is, in, it is possible. Anyone can do that. Like the Chinggis Khan and all that, if they were planning, they could do that. Whole world could be conquered. But sometimes it is also possible. The whole sky can be rolled like a piece of paper that is also possible. But to control and conquer your own mind and passion, if you can do that, I will say you are a hero. But that is the really, really difficult thing. You are fighting with your own mind, with your own thought. The two thoughts are clashing. No one is there. Not even the guru, not the god, not the scripture. You have only learned. Now you have to fight your own. And with your own mind. Your mind is impure. And there is no pill or anything to purify your mind. Only thoughts. Just imagine. That's then you will understand how difficult it is. That is why if all common people are getting everyone. Just putting a mark and then putting some dress. And chanting one or two slokas and they get liberation. Is it? Do you think so easy? That is why it is so difficult. And that is why the people remember those people, those souls, the great souls, who could, truly could do that. That is the reason. If it is so easy, then it is all easy. When one gentleman came and told, why do you worship Sri Ramachandra? He banished uh, his... A uh, pregnant wife, now he should not be worshipped. <laughs> that is why we are worshipping. <laughs> all other kings, they will never allow that. They will say, even my children, my wife and wives, uh, the relatives, if they do any wrong thing, no punishment for them. That's why they are only ordinary people. And it is Ramachandra who took the oath that my whole life is dedicated for the service of the ordinary people. The Praja. And so as a king, when the ordinary people are having doubt, why the Sita who lived in somebody's place for such a long time, almost one year, should be accepted by Sri Ramachandra? Then Rama told, okay, for the purification of the body and the mind, I will put her in an ashrama. Not that banished her, but she was taken to the ashrama of the, the Rishi. And she was there. But look at the life of Sri Rama. He was a king. But he used to lie on the floor 
because the Shita is lying over there, that is the practice in the Asrama. He used to eat only very simple food, even being a king, because Shita is eating the simple food. And sometimes the mother, Sri Ramchandra's mother and the guru, they plan that Ram should marry because the Kshatriya could marry in those days. Rama's father was having three wives. So obviously, they plan that there will be a yajna and uh, the religious uh, pr program and their wife should be there by the side of the husband. Rama told, you make a golden Shita, a Shita statue made of gold. I will keep that by my side but I am not going to look to any woman as my wife. Don't you understand those things? That is called sacrifice. Whole life that person sacrificed for only for the happiness of the prajas. If the king says, hey, who is criticizing my wife? Go and cut their heads. Then they'll be, their names will be in the history, but no, no one is going to worship them. So this sacrifice you have to understand. They are very, very special type of people. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Next question is, when I visit some temples in India or read about their wealth, feels like if Dharma Acharana is more than individualistic endeavor, the donation box should be in the school for poor kids, not in temples. Uh, your viewpoint, Maharaj. If you give, nobody will donate. So only... <laughs> The people, when they go to the temple, they feel like donating because their mind, they or they get that uh, the inspiration, the broadness, it comes. So they donate. But if you keep in the school, they can try, but no one is going to donate over there. So that is a different thing. But do you know many of the astronomers nowadays, many of the astronomers, they are truly, truly utilizing that money for the betterment of the poor people. Like Tirupati Devasthanam, they have developed the whole city over there with the hospital, with the colleges, with the schools, the roads. Tirupati Devasthanam, they're doing it. Previously, they, they thought that they should not. But as because Swami Vivekananda said that you must have to serve in this way, you have to serve the living gods and goddesses. Of course, nowadays, they are doing. Another, Ammachi, very famous, uh, the lady saint nowadays in the present day world, Ammachi is having so many schools and colleges and the mostly free treatment of the poor people. Think about the Ramakrishna mission. That there was a time when the sannyasins they were not getting any food because people never gave donation for the sannyasins. They used to donate for this relief, that work, that work. But who will work? So when a sannyasi will get sick, they'll be sending them to the, their parents. And they said, go, get the treatment in your home. And again, when you are all right, come back. That was the time. Then our president Maharaj, 10th president Maharaj, Swami Vireshwara ji, he sent an appeal in the Ananda Bajar and uh, some other newspapers in India. We appreciate that you donate for the poor people, but who will work? There's the sannyasins and brahmacharians. They don't have money to eat. And we will never take a farthing from the money you have donated for a particular purpose. Suppose you say it is for the purpose of puja, we will never take it for something else. It will be there and will be spent for puja only. So we honor the wishes of the donor. So that is Ramakrishna mission. Now people have understood now they donate for sadhu seva. The sadhus also are human beings. They will also eat. They will also do the not different type of diseases are there, the treatment. Old age also comes, then they need some support. So for them also some expenditure is there. So sadhu seva, they do. And this is the way they do. When the people, they come to the, the these holy places, and obviously, everywhere corruption will be there. And when you see some corruption here and there, and you say, stop religion, as some of the our communist friends, they say, religion is the opium. So 
they don't understand what is. There was a time in the medieval age when some people in the uh, the Great Britain particularly, they used to sell the debenture to the people that if you donate, then your seat in the heaven is uh, reserved. And people, they were so foolish, they thought, oh, that must be there. So they used to donate. And that's why a protest came against that. So that religion then made the, another group of people called Protestant. Now the Catholic and Protestant, Protestant came from the protest. It was always there. Even in the schools and colleges, if they pay money, give money, do you think they will be truly utilizing for the purpose they are donating? There will be some. It is always they go in that way. That's why Swami Vivekananda said, come, become human. To whom he, he gave the call? To the animals? No. To the human being. But the human means you have to have the control over your mind. I have this much money, but I am not going to spend it. That courage should be there. Otherwise, it is impossible. You know, somehow I could do it in Arunachal Pradesh. I received a phone call from an underground organization. Ruthless killers they are. And they told you have a lot of money. Because we are school is there. There's a lot of money. You give that money to us. I told it's true. Your information is correct. We have a lot of money in the bank. But I won't be able to give it because it is not my money. The money I have received from the government and from the guardians of the students to spend it for the education purpose, I cannot give you anything. And he said, I will come and kill you. Oh, please come. Because it is better to die than to live in this world. But only request is, I was telling him, don't think I was not afraid. I was truly afraid. But I was going on telling him. <laughs> where I was going on telling him in that way, I told that I have a request. When you are going to kill me, don't, suddenly you need not to kill me because I'm ready to die in your hand. Only request is, give me the time so that I will go and sit in my shrine and shoot from the back so my head goes and touches the my photo of my Lord. That will be my prayer to you. Please kill me. Because I know this. <laughs> then if I die again, next life will go. That's okay. And this is not necessary. And he was telling, are you mad? I'm not afraid of death. I told I am a sannyasi. Already dead. Because before taking the sannyasa, we perform all those rituals as a dead man. Dead to the world. And then again take a new life in the spiritual world. So that is called the Sadhya Yata Shiva, etc. You know, are you really crazy? <laughs> you won't understand the Hindu sannyasi. But anyway, no problem. If you will have to kill, come and give me the time so that quietly we can do, do this. Of course, he became very appreciative. Then he came and he didn't meet me, but he saw me from distance and uh, all this. Now, Suppose I was afraid, oh, I am going to die, then what will happen? Let them take my money. This could happen. I could somehow think, suppose I die, nothing is going to happen. In Ramakrishna mission, there are 2,000 sannyasins, all are educated. Things will continue. So for me, if I am dying, nobody is going to cry. So no problem for me. Why should I be so much of afraid? But for you people, of course, you have to take proper care. But that depends individually. So if you are donating, donate with an open heart. This is going to be utilized for a better purpose. Oh God, I am giving it for your service. Don't forget. You get all the blessings of God because of your that attitude. And the person who is not utilizing your money, taking for that particular purpose, it is his problem. Don't worry about it. The God's accounting is perfect. No mistake will be there. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. One last question from me. So in Kali Yuga, for ordinary people, Bhakti Margo is considered to be a better way than Gyanamargo for God realization. 
can one obtain shuddha bhakti without jnana or knowledge see nothing can be achieved without jnana without knowledge now let me tell you in this way i like to go to washington dc now there is another washington in america and it is exactly opposite to the washington dc which is the capital of this country america now without jnana if you go and purchase a ticket for washington and reach to the far end of this country in the western side west bank what will happen to you after four five hours of the the traveling oh i am in a wrong place why jnana the your effort was there everything was there just because of the wrong thing a wrong knowledge that there are two washington and one is washington dc which is the capital another is washington that is a completely different area but the same name in the name of the the one who is the washington uh, and that exactly will happen if you think just out of emotion i will realize god you won't know what is god in even when you are praying doing you will do exactly the wrong way a person is going to reach the state washington state instead of the washington dc so this we have to understand so knowledge is necessary what is god and what is god now i will conclude but shami vivekananda said unselfishness is god see a wonderful definition of god unselfishness is god the moment you become perfectly unselfish you become god yourself and when you are completely unselfish what quality will be there in you is love l o v e again shami vivekananda said we sri ramakrishna is the god and he said l o v e personified the love personified is god so god means love god means unselfishness the swami ranganathananda ji used to say one of the presidents of the ramakrishna mission he used to say how every night before going to bed ask yourself am i a little unselfish today a little better man than yesterday ask yourself and step by step go towards that goal and what you will gain two things one will be free from fear there will be no fear at all why because knowledge you know that i am going to realize god in this very life and this body this mind combination this is all very temporary like the old used garments i will throw it and i am going to live eternally so that fearlessness will come and as long as you will be in this body you will enjoy a tremendous joy will come why whatever it may be you will be in always in great joy because you will know all this i see is nothing but a movie that there are a jungle tigers are there dinosaurs is there in the movie when the senior people they go they never feel afraid of the 3d effect is there dinosaurus is coming and touching me but you know that is nothing exactly it will happen the, whatever happens all around you you know this is not real so you will be always in happiness the fearlessness and happiness extreme happiness without the support of anything external that is the achievement of a religious goal as a religious goal and that is called god realization and when i am slowly slowly having that not only i become happy anyone around me also become happy and you will understand the people who are coming to uh, towards you near you they will also get happiness joy thank you friends thank you for Manaj the Manaj wonderful Manaj. questions shanti mantra uh, we will do the shanti mantra and we will conclude om 
शांति 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 हरि ओ तत्सत श्री राम कृष्ण